a lot of people have been saying that uh, because George continued following Trevon, that is evidence that uh, he is guilty. Because apparently they seem to think that a man's guilty if he just follows somebody. So, you know, I was looking around. I wanted to find some sort of unbiased um, <clears throat> outlet that that could uh, make the people who disagree with me agree that, that that's not true. But uh, then I was thinking about it. Well, if I get an unbiased source, they're not going to agree with that. They're only going to agree with some biased source, somebody who agrees with them. So, you know, we all know that CNN is biased, and they're obviously against George. So I figured, well, let's get a little clip from their, their analysts. They've, got, they've always got legal analysts. So let's take a look and see what their legal analysts have to say. Jeffrey Tubin, uh, explain the law in Florida in a case like this. Well, Wolf, I think the clearest way to do it is to talk about the law in other states. In most other states, there's what's called a duty to, to retreat. Duty to retreat. You have to... Yeah, that's true, you know, and Florida had that before. And generally, that still stands. Duty to retreat means that, uh, you know, if you can get away, you should. And even though we have stand your ground and the law says that you don't have to retreat, typically a person would prefer, rather than killing somebody... To retreat if you're sitting in your car and somebody's uh, threatening you and your cars in drive and you got your foot on the gas and there is absolutely no possibility of that person giving you a threat let's say for example he's not holding a gun so he can't shoot you as you drive away then it would make sense to drive away if he's menacing you but if you're sitting there and, and the car is parked and the ignition's off and somebody's threatening you or holding a gun you're not going to try to run away. It wouldn't even make sense. So, you know, that's why we passed the law. There should never be an opportunity for, some, for somebody to be held responsible for killing somebody when they're trying to defend their life. And that's what Florida law was about. And that's why after Florida passed it in 05, the majority of the states followed suit. So more than half the states since then have come on board with, with the same law because everybody agrees the rest of the states are going that way. And this is really upsetting the media and the left wing. But this guy is about ready to tell you that what George did by following Trevon was not illegal. And he's going to tell you that. He's not going to tell you it was legal to go chasing down somebody. But you'll see what he says. Step back in a threatening situation. In 2005, Florida changed the law. And they have what's called the stand your ground defense, which means if you reasonably feel threatened, you can use deadly force in response. And as a result, there have been several cases where people have shot unarmed people and not been prosecuted because of this stand your ground law. It gives a lot of, it, it gives self-defense a much broader interpretation than in most other states. As you know, there are no he said in most other states, but that's not true because I just said that most states have, uh, have followed suit. Everybody's following suit. Everybody thinks that's a good idea. ...involved in investigate, bring the FBI in. How does that unfold? What's going on? Well, what, what would, if the FBI were to get involved, they would have to investigate or if they wanted to prosecute they would have to find that Zimmerman the shooter shot this young man because he was black that it was a civil rights crime so immediately when after the after the uh, media picked up the story and uh, all the people that are into uh, racial issues we'll leave those names out um, picked up this case then uh, the federal government decided they wanted to get involved and they wanted to make it a federal case and we know they can't do that unless there's racism involved I believe they were looking for the perfect case and they thought this was it I mean who would have thought the name George Zimmerman would be attached to a guy that looks Mexican and who would have thought that after all the information that came out immediately the truth was the guy had an absolute uh, 
perfect defense. That's what's so funny in this whole case. They, they, uh, they expected this to be a racial issue. When they found they couldn't, they, they did everything they could to doctor up the photos. They made uh, Trevon look like a, a you know, 14-year-old or 12-year-old or whatever. And they made George look like this big thug with a big, thick neck and menacing and with an orange uh, jumpsuit like he just he, like he's in prison. So, you know, this whole thing has been orchestrated by the left to take away guns. So that's what this whole thing's about right now. This was they're having a hard time passing gun laws. In fact, the gun laws that are getting passed are the ones they don't like. So let's finish and see where he says that George ha had a right to um, use to continue following Trevon, or at least he he wasn't in the wrong by ignoring the dispatch's command. You don't need that sort of intent if, if it's just a state offense. That's hard to do, to, to find that sort of motive, especially in a, in a situation here where at least at this point, we don't have any witnesses. Look at the pictures. Actually went on. There's an audio tape. There are suggestions of what happened, but in terms of who approached who first, who is the only witness at this point is Zimmerman himself, and obviously he's not going to talk to the authority. All right, hold on there. Oh, wait a minute. I got to say this again. He just said the only witness is Zimmerman, and of course he's not going to talk to the authorities. Let's hear that again because. You know, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now so we don't have to go over it. He just said that Zimmerman's not talking to the authorities. Is that true? Did Zimmerman not talk to the authorities? Did he get a lawyer right away so that he could cover stuff up? Um, no. He was there. He was helpful. Okay, let's finish and let's listen to that part again. Obviously, he's not going to talk to the authorities. And the, 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 the notion, the stories out there have suggested that the young teenager had gone to the store, he had like a, some Skittles, maybe a soft drink, uh, a bottle in, in his hand. Uh. Of course, that's the CNN story. He's a young teenager. He went to get some Skittles, maybe a little soft drink. You know, this is, this is what they do. This is their, they're trying to stir up a race war. You know, we saw it, and I don't think anybody can deny it. I'm sure that some will, but mostly those are the people that were stirring it. Is that enough to justify potentially the, uh, the, that this, this guy may have felt threatened by this? I, again, it's really hard to say in the abstract. You need more information. But it is true under Florida law that unarmed people have found to, th to be threatening to armed people who have then shot them and not been prosecuted. So that's important. Uh, everybody keeps saying unarmed teen teenager. This this terrible guy shot an unarmed teenager. Will they stop saying unarmed teenager? Don't they understand? It doesn't matter if you have a gun, if you have a knife. You can be a threat. You can be a threat with your finger. You can use your pinky and and take somebody completely out so this it's just so ridiculous I mean, this is an unusual law that really gives a broad definition of self-defense so it is not it's not an unusual law it's actually a clarification on the law the law has always been that no matter where you are you can defend yourself the castle doctrine says that if you're in your house and somebody attacks you then you have a special defense. That's not true. You always have the self-defense. You can always defend yourself. And even before Stand Your Ground, case after case after case of people outside, away from their home, was found not guilty based on the fact that they had, they were, they were in fear for their life. That's all that really needs to be proven. Was he in fear for his life? We already know that, that George was. There's no doubt about it. He's screaming out, crying out out of the question that even if, as it appears clear, this young man was not armed, it could be found legitimately to be self-defense under Florida law. But, you know, it's important to do a lot more investigation, find eyewitnesses, the whole, you know, anything possible that can corroborate. Yes, of course, they should find anything possible to corroborate the story.
Absolutely, and they have, and everything that they've found helps George. By the way, are you looking at the pictures of of the the little cherub? This is the little boy. Thank God that some people are slightly honest, because I'll tell you, CNN with their with their uh, Wolf Blitz and these other people just completely crooked. Great uh, or not. Uh, Zimmerman's story. Well, the the 911 dispatcher clearly says, uh, "Should I follow him?" And the 911 dispatcher says, "Do not do that." But a and this is what they keep doing. They keep twisting and lying. I mean, that's just straight out a lie. He said that George said, "Should I keep following? Should I follow him?" No, George never said that. The guy asked him, "Are you following? Jo are you following him?" And George said, "Yeah." He said, we don't need you to do that. Everybody heard that. It's embedded in my memory. I've heard it so many times. But come on. Why do they have to keep lying about it? Apparently, Zimmerman did follow, continue to follow this teenager. What, if anything, does that mean legally? This is where we get to the legal expert's p opinion about whether uh, George was liable or responsible to follow the orders of that dispatch. And... You're going to about, you're about ready to hear the legal expert's opinion that George was not bound by the dispatch's orders. In fact, the dispatch didn't give an order. But if he did, if the dispatch had said, do not follow that guy, he doesn't have any power. He's not a policeman. He has no police powers. And even if he was a policeman, he can't tell you what to do over the phone. As far as uh, Zimmerman is concerned, well, it's certainly not good for Zimmerman. It's a, it doesn't it doesn't help his case, but it doesn't completely rule out a stand your ground defense either, because it depends what happened at that point. Uh, so now that we I've shown you in my my video where we use the sounds of the of the dispatch call to verify where George is and what he's doing. I believe that he did go down that T. I believe he did turn down there and followed Trevon. I don't think that he ever saw him. Once he got out of his truck, I think he lost track of him, and I say that in my video. But I do believe he turned down there and looked for him down that way to see where he went. But as this guy said, and everybody knows, there is no law that says you have to follow the orders of a dispatch. And that if the dispatch tells you, we don't need you to do that, that is not an order, and he doesn't have any power anyway. Zimmerman may claim that uh, th this young man made an aggressive move towards him. Uh, again, we, we don't... So basically what he's saying is that if Zimmerman makes the claim that, that Trevon made an aggressive move towards him, then that would negate any issue of him following. In other words, he's allowed to follow, but if if Trevon attacks him, then that's where Trevon made the mistake. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, George is going to make the claim, like he has, that he got attacked. Well, like he did. And we have the evidence of that, of course, at the time that this was recorded back in March, uh, middle of March, that they didn't have every bit of evidence that we have. So now we can look back at this and see that he's what he's saying and agree with him and say, okay, and since your legal expertise said that back then, you must agree today with all the evidence that we have that, yes, indeed, he was attacked, or at least there is no evidence against it, and there is a ton of evidence for it. I mean, his face is bashed up, his head's bashed up. I would say that's evidence that he was attacked. So with that evidence... We, are, we know that this is a stand-your-ground case. This is 100% uh, a stand-your-ground case, and, it, and the only thing that's going to stop it from being a stand-your-ground case is going to be the federal government weighing in on the state and the state weighing in on the locals. Basically, that's what it's going to end up if he doesn't get stand-your-ground uh, immunity. And if that happens, uh, who knows what could be. It would just be it would just be a sign that our legal system is completely ruptured and no longer are any of us under the protection of the law. You know, unless you're unless you are uh, fit a certain profile, 
you're not protected. I mean, if you're apparently now, if you're a white guy and you shoot a black guy in self-defense, you you still might go to prison even if even if you uh, you were not guilty, just because they may decide to make a, a an example out of you, even though all the evidence points your way. We're going to have to see how that turns out, but we'll see right now. I don't know the facts there. Certainly, that's a bad fact for Zimmerman, the, the fact that the 911 operator said, leave him alone. But under Florida law, that's not the end of the story. Uh, he could still be threatened if the right circumstances are... are yes, the right circumstances, such as, you know, you turn down the T, you walk down there, you don't find him, you turn around, you go back, you're almost back up to the T again, and then you get confronted by the kid who says, are you following me? And you say, or like George said, uh, you got a problem? No, I don't have a problem. Boom, you get punched in the nose. Guess what? You know, and all the young people out there, and I don't care how old you are, but all the people who think that they can get away with that because someone's following them, go punch them in the nose, don't do it in Florida because you'll get Trevond. So it's obviously a complicated situation. We'll see what happens. A lot, a lot of outrage, though, across the country on this story. Uh, Jeffrey, thanks very much. Yep, yep, a ton of outrage. Absolutely. It's kind of sad, too. It's really sad that it, became, that it came to this. It really did, because there's no reason for it. The facts are the facts. Uh, the state had already come to a conclusion. Well, the DA's office had already come to a conclusion or was working on it, had already said that they refused to, to uh, arrest George. The police, the police chief refused. So, you know, those were the that's where it should have stopped. Anything that continued from there on, when, when the governor decided to make, a, make it a, a state case, he, he overstepped his boundaries. When the, when the president decided to make it a federal case, he overstepped his boundaries. But not only that, I haven't even talked about it yet, but the, even the U.N., decided they were going to step in. The UN. I need to find the clip. So we were not just going to have a, a local police department investigation. No, that's not enough. And the DA's office that usually decides if a case is going to trial? No, that's not enough. <clears throat> We've got to have the governor come in and, and assign a special prosecutor. That n For what? So we get the special prosecutor. Now the state stepped in. And then the, then the president steps in and says, if I had a son, he'd look like Trevon. And so he steps in. And he sends Eric Holder down here to stir all the racial tensions and bring all of the racial people down here. So they were digging for anything they could find. And believe me, if the word coon appeared on that tape, you can bet your bottom dollar that George Zimmerman would be being tried for for a hate crime. You bet your bottom dollar. That's why I would bet anybody on that that word. That word does not exist on that tape. One hundred percent sure. Believe me. The the you think that the FBI would have let that go? That's this this is the only case that the president has made personal. The only one. Anyhow, I'm going to cut this off now. Uh, good talking to you guys.